When I was fly fishing in Colorado, I began to think deeply about the connections of my strategies to catch a fish and that of Satan's strategies to catch us. After a long day and having no luck up to that point in my day, my brother reminded me that the storms in Colorado, they come up really, really quick. From about the time you spot them, you have a limited amount of time to get to a place of safety. He talked about how it wouldn't take long that if you ever felt any kind of kinetic energy, any kind of rumbling or, or vibration within your rod, that you're better off just dropping it all together and staying clear. That you run the risk of quite literally being electrocuted. This was so interesting to me given how my day had gone. It started out with tremendous noise. Then it became the winds that hit me from every last direction, keeping me from being effective. That of the Holy Spirit. Then it became that of the rock that we build our life upon that would cut my line repeatedly. And then I was reminded of the all-encompassing storm of our Heavenly Father. I think of Mount Sinai, the children of Israel, God's voice being that of like thunder, drawing fear and trembling into the hearts of people. I think of Satan in the desert as he tried to manipulate Jesus by finally positioning himself to be the counterfeit father. It is the father who then sends the son down to do the father's will. It's the will of the father that all would be saved. It's the will of the father to sacrifice his son for you and for me. It's this idea of a storm that we know in the end of days will be all encompassing that even Satan himself will drop his rod and his reel, that all of his efforts will be in vain, and he will run for his life, because what God will do next is put him and lock him away for all eternity. And all that will be left is the heaven and the earth that was created, paradise that was created for you and for me, because simple faith and trust in Jesus Christ is what makes that possible.